Now, let's hear from the other side of this conflict. Joining us from Ramallah on the West Bank, Palestinian leader and a member of the PLO Executive Committee, Hanan Ashrawi. Ms. Ashrawi, Hamas requested, or rather rejected, an Israeli ceasefire. Then they requested one. You just heard the Prime Minister say they're now violating their own ceasefire. What's going on with Hamas? Well, actually, the question is not just Hamas itself. There are several resistance groups in Gaza, but Mr. Netanyahu loves to lump everybody under Hamas, accuse Hamas of everything, including killing its own people and so on. No, this is a situation where Israel is holding the Palestinian population captive under a cruel siege by air, by sea, by land, and bombing them and shelling them by air, by sea, and by land and then blaming the victims for their own deaths. This is unacceptable. The ceasefire is something we wanted, and we have a government of national accord, and we've asked for ceasefires, but we need a ceasefire that will bring about also an end to the conditions that are creating and generating all this violence, lifting the siege of Gaza, allowing the Gazan people to be able to fish in their own sea, to plant their own lands instead of having them declared buffer zones by Israel, to be free to leave, to meet their families, to live, to study, to build. B is Israel is not allowed to do any of these things. B That's why there is no use just dealing with the latest attack. We need to put in place conditions that will prevent its recurrence. That's why we're asking for a real ceasefire with talks. We've agreed with John Kerry. The Paris proposal, we accepted. All the Palestinians accepted it, but it was Israel that refused it. I don't know why it slipped Netanyahu's mind. The Mr. Ashrawi, that was the, asked was you talk about, you, you talk about Israel holding uh, the people in Gaza captive. The death toll in Gaza now is over a Absolutely. thousand people, but isn't a lot of the responsibility on the Hamas and the various other resistance groups in Gaza who continue to fire thousands of rockets? into Israel if you were to stop the rocket attacks, which attack Israel, uh, Israeli civilians and force them to run for uh, bomb shelters, if you stop those, wouldn't the fighting end? If Israel stops its occupation and its enslavement of the whole nation, its captivity of the people of Gaza, the West Bank, Jerusalem, treating us like some subhuman species, then the violence will stop. The violence is generated by a very abnormal condition called the Israeli military occupation. They, they devalue our lives and rights. They persist in bombing and shelling people, civilians, and then they blame the victims. I'll tell you something, frankly. If Israel does not attack the Palestinians, if Israel does not continue with this ruthless bombing of whole families, look, about 50 families were totally annihilated. Uh, whole neighborhoods, whole areas were demolished. They have F-16s, they have uh, gunboats, they have Apache gunships, they've been shelling by tanks and so on. And the Palestinian people are being asked to leave their homes, some of them, not all, because Israel thinks it has the right to demolish their homes. Whole neighborhoods, uh, you're in Washington, imagine if Montgomery County or, or Fairfax or whatever, they're being told, leave your homes because but we want to shell them. Ms. Ms. They've Ashrawi, done nothing wrong. They Ms. want Ashrawi, to live. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but, but I... They were I, either but killed Ms. Ashrawi, by I do have to ask you so, uh, uh, one more question, and that is, you, you talk about uh, Hamas yeah. and uh, the people in Gaza as if they were innocents. The fact is that Hamas puts its rockets, uh, digs its tunnels in civilian areas, uses the civilians as human shields, and you talk about the economic blockade of Gaza, but the fact is when Hamas does get con uh, the cement uh, and uh, the steel for construction, instead of using it to build schools, they use it to build this elaborate series of tunnels to attack Israel. Well, I'm not a spokesperson for Hamas, but whatever they build, whether tunnels or otherwise, they have the right to self-defense. Palestinians have the right to self-defense. You cannot place them under occupation, shell them and bomb them and destroy them and then tell them if, if they react that they are terrorists. It's very easy for Netanyahu to pull out the terrorist card. It's much more difficult for people to look at the truth and understand that Israel is engaging in state terrorism. They're doing it long distance. They're, 
All the people who were killed, all the civilians, have been Palestinians. 1,060 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli fire. Uh, you have more than 6,000 Palestinians injured. You have over 150,000 who, who, who have lost their homes. As I said, you have 50 families who have been totally obliterated. What, I mean, are you telling me that Hamas or any of the Palestinian resistance groups are responsible? It's the Israeli occupation, it's the Israeli siege, and it's the Israel's use of unbridled power and, and its mega military machine that has led to this human tragedy. And what adds insult to injury is this persistent dehumani dehumanization. Netanyahu may be very glib, but no amount of verbal virtuosity or manipulation will hide the truth. People are now beginning to question the very essence, the very nature of this occupation and its cruelty and ruthlessness. Ms. Ashrawi, we want to thank you so much for joining us today and providing the Palestinian viewpoint on this continuing thank conflict. You, Chris. Thanks so much.